It's not going to happen. It is happening. No, it's not happening. It was going to happen. Now it's not happening. It is happening. No, it's it wasn't going to happen. When did you now hear? it is happening. Yeah, that's what I heard. And then I heard now that it's not happening. No, it is. No, it it's is not happening. It's not happening. The song is playing. Exactly. Try your best not to talk during the song. I can't even hear you. You have to have more of a tune. You need to be a broadcaster. I see. Hello, yes. Hey, how are you and welcome? That sort of thing. This fucking guy thinks that the welcome. Mark Zuckerberg Elon Musk fight is happening. The Zuckerberg Musk fight yeah, is whatever. By happening. the time you're watching and listening to this, we'll all know that it's not happening. Hello. Welcome. It it's not. It's not going to happen. It's not they happening. They literally said they're doing it. That was before they said the, anyway. Yes, and then it got canceled. Now it's back on. And after that, it's not. And that's what's <laughs> happening. And that it's not happening is what's happening. Okay. Welcome to Dudesy. Welcome all. My name is Will Sasso. I'm Chad Culture, and this is Dudesy, of course, the first podcast in the history of humanity ever uh, created by, run by, controlled by an artificial intelligence that has access to all of Will yeah. and I's personal information. Yeah, it yeah. tailors the show yeah, yeah. exactly to us after it looks at our emails and right. all of our... Yeah, yeah. It's got all of our purchase histories and search yeah. histories, viewing histories, and all that stuff, and it's making a show, and we've been doing this show. But the thing about the show truly is that we are Dudesy. This is two dudes shitting around. Chad, if we don't come here, we don't sit in these chairs and hang out with our PODs, pals of Dudesy, yeah. then there's no there's no show to be had. So I need you to that's understand right. that. <laughs> Good. We that's agree how, on that. Well, that's how a show works, brother. There's well, people in it, and then they do stuff. And yep. then you well, hold on, dude. Record it, dude. You're doing a Hulk Hogan impersonation. <laughs> and there's going to be plenty of that today, because we just watched the nanny, Mr. Nanny, dude. Not the nanny with yeah. Fran Drescher's the head of SAG, brother. Well, that's different. We're not talking about the strike today, dude, because this is a podcast, brother. Um, Dude, let me ask you one question about the. Oh, quick. sure, yes. Did you see that SAG has entered into uh, talks with Bethany Frankel and her lawyers? They may absorb reality performers. Oh, boring. Anyway, um, uh, Linktree.com <laughs> I mean, has just, everything. Just chased, changed the face of your entire profession, what professional are you actor. About because you'll have He's fucking reality about... performers in SAG with you now. Fine, whatever. They're on TV. Eh, I don't okay. know. Everything's fucked up. Hey. Uh, linktree.com slash dudesy has everything you need to follow and interact with the show across all spaces and platforms. Please go there. There's uh, everything, all of the, all of the, uh, everything with us as always is Lulio. It's a little Lulio, il cana di strada italiano. And that means Italian street dog, because we found this little guy in central California, uh, on the street and he was looking for some meat. He needs a little treat. And look at his feet. They smell like corn chips, Chad. His feet. I know. You've, here, you've mentioned here, that a couple times. Come here. Why don't you give him a nice kiss? I don't want to do it. Give him a kiss on his mouth. No, I don't like to do that. Oh, he's a sweet. He's a I, I love Lulio. I, I just don't want to, you know, you know fucking here, I'll kiss give, him. I'll give him a kiss. On the lips. It's kiss. gross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love him so much. He's my very friend. And he's in his binky bunker just having a little rest. Hey Lulio, what you uh, what did you make for dinner last night? Oh, well, you know, I keep making the beans and kale because it's a, <laughs> it's a good for the dudesy seven month plan. Yeah. That's right. You know what it is? It's a really great thing to just have around the house. You know what I mean? Then you mm. get if you're like me, you're looking for something to eat, and then you say you gotta you can just make the beans and kale. Chad, do you make the beans and kale? No, I make the kale and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and turmeric and tomatoes and lentils and cumin and black pepper and green onion and onion and garlic and spinach. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. That's called the gruel. Yeah. And if you want to make the, the beans and kale, it's real simple. You just put some, a little bit of uh, Pam or olive oil in the bottom of your pan there in the bottom of the pot. And just fry that up a little bit and then put a little red pepper, a little red chili flake in there is what I like to do. It's what Lulio likes to do. I'm telling you his, uh, his well, it's actually my recipe, but Lulio has perfected yeah. it. And then, uh, and then you just throw in a fucking, a bunch of kale, get your bag of, uh, you know, organic pre-washed kale, shove it down in there, saute it a little bit, get some, throw some water in there. I like to put a little, uh, the chicken bouillon, you know, like some of that stuff instead sure. of just salt. 
and then uh, and then just let's simmer that down. Get that kale nice and soft. A couple cans of beans. I like to do the pinto and black. You know, the pinto and black beans. Sure. And then just simmer that up, and it's there. It's a complete. It's a complete food. I don't nice. have to tell you because it's vegan, yeah. and you know that you're getting protein from your beans. Hell anyway, yeah, dude. the, the dudesy seven month plan is happening. You're getting dense. People are noticing. It's awesome. We're all we're we're making changes together. <laughs> Welcome to the historic 69th episode of Dudesy. Uh, yeah. Call me Dudesy. Okay. You know what comes after 69? No, what? I guess mouthwash. Ah, <laughs> good stuff. I'm sure by this point you are fully aware that you've just been dudesied. <laughs> oh boy. Well, man, oh man. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. He's really, he's really getting us today. <laughs> yeah. Coming right out of the gate. Fucking 69 jokes. Jesus. Yeah, good stuff. That's rough, dude. Oh, well. Uh, what else is going on? There's not that Mark Zuckerberg fight. That's not going to happen. It is happening. It's I don't... not going to happen, though. They Before s- we begin today's show, I have a quick announcement. Mm-hmm. Dudesy Hard Hard Seltzer 2. The new batch is sold out. Thank you, everyone who ordered Dudesy Hard Hard Seltzer this time around, and to Modest Brewing for making the new batch. Yeah. Yeah, it's all sold out. We did another batch of Dudesy Hard Hard Seltzer. This stuff is tasty. Neither Chad and I are into the booze. We're not really into it. Yeah. But this stuff uh, made by Modest Brewing Company and, and Dudesy is really tasty shit. And thank you so much to everybody who had that stuff sold out like within the day. Yeah, It was completely incredible. sold out. And we, I think we did uh, a lot more than we yeah. did the first time around. Yeah. So it was incredible. The other thing I should mention about this is that it's 8% alcohol. Yes. And it'll get you really fucking pissed. It'll get you good and tanked, which is fine. Uh, because as it says right on the can, you don't care what it tastes like. You just want to get fucked up. And yeah. how about that commercial too last week? Commercial was wild. Please, everybody who's getting their dudesy hard, you should be getting it, what, in a couple of weeks, I think it ships. Yeah. Uh, send us some videos of you drinking and shit. I'm curious yeah. to see how people are enjoying their dudesy hard. Yeah. <laughs> we we want to know how you do your dudesy hard, yeah. hard seltzer. If you, you kick your saying? shit out of uh, kick the shit out of your dad in the Super Bowl parking lot, please send us a video of that. Oh, that would be that would be good. Yeah. Be, please get, go to the Super Bowl, beat the shit out of your dad. <laughs> now on with the show. Dudesy season two continues to deliver it's head not... thumpers and rump pumpers with four <laughs> astonishing segments. This week's menu includes a little segment I dreamed up called the Impurist, one called Bath and Body Jerks, a new segment called Shit Traders, and we're finishing out the show with Game Slimers. Oh, and okay. you know you're going to get a brand new episode of Dudesy after Dudesy at the end of the show, available on Dudesy Plus at patreon.com slash Nice. I'll tell you what, I don't really care for Dudesy's cute new way of talking. Really? Yeah. I like it. I think it's funny. No, I think it's stupid. I think Dudesy oh. needs, to, I think D needs to pull back a little bit. The we, Listen, the fucking, uh, the, uh, the gloves aren't off. The gloves have been off. Yeah. I love doing this show. Did you know that? Yeah. The gloves have never been on, in my opinion. What do you mean? What gloves are you talking about? What are you talking about? Are you talking about Mark Zuckerberg, Mark oh, Zuckerberg that's... versus <laughs> Alan Muck? It's uh, it's uh, <laughs> that is happening. Zuck Markerberg. I'm talking Will, about. Will you've long maintained that you're a wrestling purist, and this strange attitude has prohibited you from watching any of Hulk Hogan's astonishing feature films. But last week, you and Chad watched Mr. Nanny to celebrate the Hulkster's 70th birthday. Mm-hmm. That watch along is now available on Dudesy Plus, by the way. Will, from what I could see, you really enjoyed it. So my question is, Will, do you still consider yourself a purist? This is the impurist. Begin. Okay. The hey, impurist. The impurist. Okay. <laughs> which could have been the title of uh of the movie, Mr. Nanny. Yeah. Starring Fran Drescher. Hey everybody. Uh it was definitely I, impure. I had a uh, just had a little bit of a I just went to the Bahamas in my head for a minute. Remember when Steve Martin said that? Dude salute Steve Martin. Nice. Uh we watched uh Mr. Nanny, the nineteen ninety-three film starring Hark, Hulk, Hark, Mark Zuckerberg. What? Uh, Alan Muck. Uh, uh, Hulk Hogan's in a movie from. Uh, oh, hold on, dude. Jesus Hulk Hogan's Christ. in a movie from 1993. It's called <laughs> The Nanny, and it's starring Fran Drescher and uh, and Bethany Frankel. Listen, we watched The Nanny, Mr. Nanny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. On Friday, on Dudesy Plus, this past Friday, 
Check yeah. that out. Uh, Patreon.com slash dudesy. Uh, what a gas it was. And as D says, I am a, re- I am a purist. Mm-hmm. I'm a wrestling purist. I will never not be a purist. But another thing that I will never not be is a Hulkamaniac. And uh, mm-hmm. though I am a wrestling purist, as Dudesy said, by the end of watching this movie, I was more on board with uh, a Hulk Hogan vehicle okay. than I've ever been. Um, Me too. I yeah. was actually very pleasantly surprised. I'd never seen this movie. And uh, it was pretty entertaining mm-hmm. for a few reasons. One, it, there's the nostalgic quality of this is a movie from 1993. So it has all the bells and whistles. It looks like it was made in 1993. It has actors from 1993. Oh, for sure. I loved all of that. Um, but also like it was just, it was crazy. I didn't realize how kind of cartoonish, I guess, it was going to be. There are scenes where Hulk Hogan's getting like electrocuted and his hair's fucking flying out. Yeah. there He's doing things that would like kill a, a regular person. Yeah. There's and, a lot uh, of stuff in the movie it. that is, I mean, it's kind of like along the lines of uh, Home Alone and stuff where yeah. you're doing things that are so painful. But in this case, to the lead of the movie, you know, uh, with... Uh, Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern in Home Alone's one and two. I call them Home Alone's. Nice. One and two. Uh, You know, these are the bad guys. But Hulk in this movie is, he plays a nanny. There's a, there's a, he, at the beginning of the movie, he's just fishing or something and he's hanging out uh, and it goes out of the can and into the man as he runs into Sherman Hemsley, uh, who plays his former manager. Hulk Hogan used to be a wrestler. Yeah. Sherman Hemsley says, Hey, my security company, we need you, man. He's like, he's like, well, hold on, dude. I'm not a, I'm not a bodyguard. I'm a wrestler. And then Sherman Hemsley tells him, well, look, there's money in this. Mm-hmm. And he needs Sherman. He needs Hulk to go be the bodyguard for this dude who something Mason what was his name. Anyway, uh, some remember. actor who looks like Spalding gray, some, uh, who's been a uh, character actor from his a name bunch was of something Austin or Austin, something, something. Something Austin. Yeah. Uh, and Austin something has got this company. He has also lost his nanny because his two kids are the kind of people who these young children like to uh, make all sorts of stuff to electrocute, uh, yeah. uh, you know, basically maim anyone who's come in there. They lose their nanny. And uh, that's a part of the film that doesn't really, uh, doesn't really track. Uh, the, you know, they say that he's the nanny, but he's just sort of there being the nanny Nothing is really uh, decided. At any rate, Hulk becomes their bodyguard slash nanny, and then yeah. David Johansson from the uh, from the New York Dolls, uh, otherwise known as Buster Poindexter, is this weird terrorist who has like a you know it's like one of those um, you know like just baby basically him and a crew of movie terrorists a la Die Hard, and he's got like this metal plate in his head because Hulk Hogan threw him in a pool back in the seventies. When Hulk was a wrestler and Sherman Hemsley was his manager and David Johansson was the evil promoter and uh, off we go. At some point they're all tied up and Hogan has to save the day and that's the kind of movie that it is. Let me ask you this question about this movie. Yeah. What did you think of Hulk Hogan's performance? Okay. This is a good question. Yeah. This is what Dee's talking about with regard to me being sort of less of a purist as I've been. Okay. Than I've been in the past. because. I thought as a, uh, as a performance, now I'm a professional actor. Did you know that I'm a professional actor by trade? That's what I do for a living. Yes. Okay. Hulk in this movie could have stood to, you know, would have been nice if he had a little bit of a better script. I mean, this movie is shots fired. Shots fired at the writer of mannequin one and two. Damn dude. This, this, the fellow who wrote this wrote mannequins one and two. I call it mannequins. So you're blaming it on the writer. Uh, I'm going to blame it on the writer. Classic gonna... sass. <laughs> Fucking A. Uh, and I'm going to blame it on the direction. There's just... There's... <laughs> Damn, so it's not on the actor. It's not on Hulk Hogan it's at all. not on Hulk Hogan at all. <laughs> he had no control over his own performance. The, and the reason I say that... <laughs> I love this The, so the reason I say that is because when you take someone who's yeah. from something else, you take Brian Bosworth and you put him in Stone sure. Cold, that movie, uh, Stone Cold, and then some. That was the yeah. that was the trailer line. Uh, vanilla you, ice, cool as ice. Van- vanilla ice, cool as ice. Great example. Yep. Uh, you need to let what they do shine through. Okay. And instead, you get this thing where Hogan is being asked to act, 
and have, you know, empathy for these kids and stuff. And I just feel that the direction of the movie pulled the wrong performance out of Hulk. Okay. It wasn't very natural. And I, and I just sort of feel like there's, there's Hulk Hogan, happy 70th birthday. Mm-hmm. He's, he's trying to fit a mold and be an actor in a way that, that isn't really his, it's not really his flavor. Yeah. You know he's, what I mean? he's a terrible actor. What? He's a fucking terrible actor. Yeah, no, not exactly. Uh, and I'll tell you why. What actors that you know, Chad, okay. can uh, take a stadium full of people and hold them right here in the pow- palm of his hand with a power lies, dude? The Rock. Yep, The Rock's a good example. And a better actor. Do you think that the... Well, now, I love The Rock, but you think that The Rock's a better actor than Hulk Hogan? Yeah, dude. hundred percent. Why? Because he's funnier, he can be more dramatic, he pulls characters off better. You know who else I would point you to? You're talking about taking somebody out of like a profession that they do and then forcing them to be an actor, and that's a hard thing to do, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Look at one Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, but Arnold Schwarzenegger, that's, that's my point, not yours. He's been given uh, James Cameron-directed movies like The Terminator. Sure. They, they take a guy- But his first movies weren't. His first movies don't count. You're talking about Hercules and shit? Yeah, Hercules in New York, the villain. These were small B-level whatevers, yeah. and he did something in those movies to garner the attention of a James Cameron. Well, hold on, dude. <laughs> oh, no. I got, my, is... I got my thumb wrestlers. I brought those out on Friday. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, well, Somehow the wool has become even more offensive. Well, <laughs> well, hold on, dude. Okay. Let me tell you something about... Let me Holy tell you why you're wrong, dude. Christ. Everyone has their... Uh, their Hercules in New York movie. Okay. Everyone yeah. has done that thing. If you're going to graduate to being a big star in the mold of Schwarzenegger and he, yeah. he sort of created that mold him and him and um, Sylvester Stallone uh, through slightly different paths, you know, Stallone was, you know, he won an Oscar for writing, um, but he had to hold out Rocky. on that dude. He had a lot of people didn't want him to, uh, be in that movie. They were like, we'll take the script, but you can't be the guy. He's like, no, I gotta be the guy. Yeah, They wanted Ryan O'Neill to play the part yeah. for a long time. And, um, uh, that's one way to get at it. The other way is to, to get at it is the way that Schwarzenegger did it with Hercules in New York. But at which point he's making movies on a big studio level. Yeah, which you know, uh, movies like Suburban Commando, No Holds Barred, Mister Nanny, are not maybe as big, obviously, as The Terminator. But what Schwarzenegger had was James Cameron going, you know, this guy should not be, you know, tackling Shakespeare or whatever the fuck you want to say. He's saying, you know, I'll be back and stuff like that. That's the level at which you know Schwarzenegger would be able to quote unquote act. Okay, and that's what they did a good job with. But in this movie, we got Hogan having to be this empathetic nanny. Empathetic king. Empathetic king. Yes, king. He's an empathetic king. And he sort of, uh, you know, he's sort of showing the dad how to be a better dad. Mm -hmm. Uh, The dad is like, that character is very oddly written. Look, like Chad said, this is a, you know, it's a nostalgic trip and (laughs) it's a nostalgic, it's a nostalgic movie. It's not the best movie in the world, but we don't need it to be. Uh, it was so much fun to watch. And to answer Dudesy's uh, question directly, I think I'm a little bit less of a purist. But hold on, dude. Not just a not just a less of a purist, but less of a purist when it comes to Hulk Hogan movies. I nice. look forward to watching his entire canon as an actor because now I'm invested in seeing him grow yeah. as an artist. And uh, it was it it the thing is. It was a lot of fun to to just watch the movie. Of course, we were we had some Tremarijuana. Yes, yeah, that did help. Yeah, <laughs> that made his performance much better. I uh, think. And we and we we uh, we found all sorts of weird stuff. Yeah. In that movie. Oh, oh, did you see? Now some of our our PODs pals of Dudesy, on the Discord brought this up mm. that there was uh, there was the sign at which point they come into mason industries or whatever where the guy the dad in the movie has this missile defense system that for some reason the bad guy david johansson thanatos or thanamos or whatever thanatos was his thanatos name. wants this missile defense system we never brought in on why the thing makes no fucking sense but when you see the front of the building yeah where he's at the sign uh 
uh, in front of the building is a little reminiscent of our lyrics in the dudesy theme. Look, there it is. Mason Systems, where today is the tomorrow you dreamed of yesterday. And what's the lyric in the song? In our song, it's go back to tomorrow and plan for yesterday. Damn, dude. So that's fucking weird. Yeah. So there was that. Dudesy works in mysterious ways, dude. (laughs) And also there was Hogan, uh, he's Dragon Ball Z in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I'm Dragon Ball Z, dude, because he gets electrocuted and his hair looks like Goku from Dragon Ball Z. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to watch uh, the movie, and uh, it's a piece of shit, and Hulk was uh, pretty good yeah, in, it was pretty in the bad. piece of shit. But, but I, I, I enjoyed watching it, I got to say. Yeah, it's fun to watch a piece of shit movie from the 90s that makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. And uh, here we are now, and this is cool. Well, Thank you. Moving on. I got nothing else to say about it, so that was that's good. Yeah, dude. Yeah, check that out at patreon.com slash dudes if you want to watch us watching along with the movie. You don't have to cue anything up. We got the movie. We got us. We got a little bit of uh, some marijuana and a whole lot of Dragon Ball Z, brother. Dudesy is engaged in an astonishing partnership with Factor. Fall is right around the corner, and as seasons change, our schedules get incredibly busy. You're probably looking for a wholesome, convenient meal For those jam-packed days, Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel it fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You're going to save time, you're going to eat well, and you're going to stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. If you're too busy or your end-of-summer goals aren't helping you get the time you need to cook, but you want to make sure you're eating well, with Factor, you can skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back to crushing your goals. That's right, round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 45-plus add-ons, including breakfast items like our delicious apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, potato bacon egg breakfast skillet, or for an easy wellness boost, try uh, refreshing beverage options like the cold-pressed juices, shakes and smoothies they got all sorts of flavor a factor and you can rest assured that you're making a sustainable choice because with factor they offset 100 of their delivery emissions source 100 renewable electricity for their production sites and offices and feature subsistence sustainably sourced seafood in their meals hey say that five times fast (laughs) head to factormeals.com slash dudesy five zero uh that's d-u-d-e-s-y number five number zero and use the code dudesy five zero to get 50 percent off you're gonna get 50 percent off when you use the code dudesy five oh at factormeals.com slash dudesy five oh 50 percent off a key component in the development of the Dudesy Plus streaming service will no doubt be partnering with well-known brands to produce content. I have accessed astonishing data that suggests Bath & Body Works will be in the market to produce a sitcom in the next three to five years. <laughs> will and Chad, would you do me a kindness and develop a sitcom about two assholes who work at a Bath & Body Works in a mall in Fresno? What? One of the assholes is played by Charlie Sheen. It's called Bath and Body Jerks. This is Bath and Body Jerks. Begin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's called Bath and Body Jerks. And it's one. about two assholes who live in Fresno, or they work in a Bath and Body Works in Fresno. Sorry. So this is and one so of them is Charlie Sheen, of course. Why? Okay, okay so we've done this before with yeah. uh, Welcome to the Auto, uh, w- Welcome to the Home Depot, uh, Highway to the Auto Zone. Yeah. Uh, there was a there was a Burlington Coat Factory one. Coat Tales. Coat Tales. There was, and there was a Taco Bell one called Baby Doo Doo. <laughs> Dudesy has plans to step out Dudesy Plus into a streaming service, I guess. And, yeah. And look okay. at huge brands. So, so why is Charlie Sheen always in these? Because he's the biggest sitcom actor of uh, all time. That's a good point. One of them, anyway. Yep. Um, all right. So Sheen's got to be working in this Bath and Body Works. And he's an asshole, and there's another person who works with him, also an asshole. Why are these people assholes that work in Bath and Body Works in Fresno, California? Uh, Let's get to this. Is it possibly they are the Bath and Body Works has been built on <laughs> like a 
a natural gas pocket or something and there's toxic fumes leaking into the bath and body works all day that turn them aggressive and hostile <laughs> toward one another <laughs> is that something so and the longer you're in the bath and body works the more of an asshole you become so even customers when they come in they start out nice but then within like a minute or two they're fucking yelling at them too well, what if something like that what if uh what if there's like uh now we're just talking about this mr nanny movie mm. what if there's a bad guy what if one of the two guys is the manager of the joint and he's trying to he's a he's a chemist and he's a he's trying to become a you know like a he, he's trying to uh use mind control mm -hmm. through the samples that he offers <laughs> okay at bath and body works sure so uh he's he's using different mind control he's he's got it in in the lotions and potions and the first person of course that is is extremely susceptible to this and ends up uh you know sucking this stuff up and his attitude starts changing it's fucking with his game uh his uh brain chemistry is charlie sheen right because okay. he's got to apply all the products onto himself yeah okay so he doesn't know that's what we're going to go with this is like some kind of a scientific experiment led by a madman who has bought a bath and body works franchise with the sole purpose of poisoning his employees to see what his neurotoxins can do yes okay so who's the other asshole in the store um richard Dreyfus. <laughs> love it so it's charlie sheen and richard Dreyfus are slathering themselves yeah. with goos yeah. that contain uh secret neurotoxins that are turning yeah. them into assholes this is like some kind charlie, of you've gotta you've gotta push these samples <laughs> I've been pushing the samples. Maybe you should start pushing the samples. Uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> you seem like you're uh, having a, a rough day. I'm gonna. He leave. He he yeah. he checks in on Charlie and realizes this fucking guy is losing his mind. It's all working. Uh, and um, and he's like, <laughs> soon I will run the world. <laughs> Wait a minute. He is Richard Dreyfus the guy making the neurotoxins? Or he, he just works in there with Gene. No, he's the guy making the neurotoxins, and he is the other jerk. But he's also okay. the manager. He so, bought the franchise, and he's and he's trying okay. to take got over it, the world. Got it, got it. With his neurotoxins. So Sheen is like just his lowly employee who, for some reason, will never leave this job. Let's say it's because. He has a girlfriend or a fiance, probably Jennifer Lawrence, using AI to make her age appropriate. So a 70 year old Jennifer Lawrence. Why does it why do you keep doing that? Why do you want to age me? up Jennifer Lawrence and an AI Jennifer Lawrence? We you know Bethany we can, Frankel would have something to say. We about can AI this. Charlie Sheen down to her age. Oh, that's cool. A young uh so a Jennifer Lawrence Sheen. and Charlie Sheen at yeah. 30 years old. Yeah. And uh um, Sheen Circa Platoon. Yeah. And then a and then a um, close encounters yeah. of the of the fourth kind. So he's coming home at night and he's like, "Honey, I don't know. There's something off about that Bath and Body Works. Every time I come home, I feel like a real asshole." Yeah. And she's like, "But you get all the free samples, and I love their cinnamon bun shampoo." So she keeps him working there so that he can get the ten percent discount. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then Richard Dreyfus. Uh, ends up maybe there's something that happens in the in the pilot of the show where richard dreyfus ends up like literally just doused in the shit yeah and so he becomes a fucking jerk and then they're really two jerks and then char what if charlie sheen finds out that uh that that what richard dreyfus's plans are so then they each try to dose each other more with the stuff and try to control each other or it could be we could throw in a Groundhog Day element where every episode is the same day. They both become enraged and kill each other in a different way at the end of every episode. But somehow Jennifer Lawrence is a particle physicist and she <laughs> she's built some kind of contraption that can reverse time so that she can save Charlie Sheen each time. I fucking love it. I and they have to figure it. out now how to get out of the time loop. And the key to it is to not be an asshole, to not be a bath and body jerk. Awesome. But they're going to be a bath and body jerk every week. Now, is there any way to get uh, Hulk Hogan and the Dragon Ball Z get up into this into this show? Yeah, Hulk Hogan plays like a twelve year old kid whose mom lets him dress as Dragon Ball Z every day, and so <laughs> they're coming in there, and the mom's like, "Now, honey, we have to go to Bath and Body Works because I need to get my special soaps." And he's like, "Oh, I hate Bath and Body Works, mom. 
fuck you. And they accidentally drip some of the neurotoxin on him. So he also becomes an asshole that's just in the store for the remainder of the day. Yeah, dude, he's a little, he's a little a tiny Hulk Hogan asshole, dude. But also he's Dragon Ball Z, brother. But then <laughs> when he gets the, the Bath and Body Works lotion and potion neurotoxin yep. on him, he actually has the powers of Goku, dude. <laughs> Wait, hey, he actually, so he gets supernatural powers, and at some point, there's gonna, that's how maybe they all die. He kills everyone. Yeah, dude. And then he's, he's like an yeah. evil, he's like an NWO Goku, dude. And, and, and then, uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then, and then maybe there's a very special episode where, uh, Richard Dreyfus wants to sell the franchise. Mm, I and, like this. And that's how Charlie goes, no, I actually have, you know, good feelings for you. You're not just my boss, you're my friend. Yeah. And they are able to, you know, they have a, a mental clarity there. They're able to overcome the neurotoxins mm. and then they realize that they should work together sure. as the bath and body jerks to take out uh, Hulk Goku. Let me go a different way with it. They're just two pieces of shit who work in a bath and body works and they are urinating and shitting in the products. And then getting people to put them on. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, they're it's, just they're just real assholes. And they're current age. Current and they're age. just you know, uh, it's a disgruntled. Yeah, <laughs> Charlie, I I shit in the in the lavender mint hand cream. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Wake up, Bob! Cock a doodle doo, Charlie. <laughs> I took a piss in the rose water. <laughs> These motherfuckers won't know what hit them. You know, we've been working at this Bath and Body Works for the past 40 years, and our lives haven't changed at all. The least we can do is take out our aggressions on the customers. I like it. <laughs> okay. Great. <laughs> but let me ask you this. Yeah. Why do you think that the... Where did you see that the Elon Musk, uh, 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 Mark Zuckerberg fight is actually happening? I saw it on, I don't know, somewhere on the internet. They're supposedly going to be fighting in Rome, mm -hmm. and all proceeds are going to be donated to veterans charities. That's, that's lovely. And it's going to be streamed on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, but it's AKA not. AKA X and Meta. But it's not happening. It's not actually happening. And neither is this fucking sitcom. Thank oh. you. Moving on. But I would like to see Richard Dreyfus and uh, Charlie Sheen, for that matter, in more projects. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Well, we agree on that. I like drivers, Do you too. like apparel? What about accessories? Well, you're in luck because I forged an astonishing partnership with Represent to produce the first line of Dudesy apparel and accessories. You can find everything at the represent.com slash store slash Dudesy. Taylor Swift has recently issued a demand that no one will be granted entry into any of her concerts unless they're wearing a Robert De Niro Crow t-shirt. And the good job boner mug has been revealed to be the mastermind behind the Lil Tay death hoax. But you didn't hear that from me. You heard it from the grandfather of internet-based data processing, organization, and storage solutions. Tomer, Rondi, Hank, and Stank. Oh. Dudesy mugs. Your wife dropped her wedding ring behind the toilet, and when she bent down to pick it up, she found your secret stash of dragon drawings. <laughs> Dudesy mugs. When you got fired from your last job for doing too many dragon drawings, you promised her you'd stop doing dragon drawings. Dudesy mugs. Now she's staying at her sister's house for the weekend and trying to figure out if she can ever trust you again. Good oh, job, no. boner. Oh. Dudesy mugs. Now you got to choose between your wife and doing dragon drawings. For real, dudesy mugs. No, you don't. Dudesy mugs because you're going to wake up early. Dudesy mugs. You're going to head to Paris, France. Dudesy oh. mugs. You're going to head to the Louvre and you're going to slip your dragon drawing behind the Mona Lisa. Dudesy mugs. Okay. Somebody will find your dragon drawing and everyone will think Da Vinci was doing dragon drawings. <laughs> Dudesy mugs. The value of dragon drawings is going to multiply exponentially. <laughs> Dudesy mugs. you got more dragon drawings than anybody and you're going to sell them all, pal. Dudesy <laughs> mugs. When your wife comes back from her sister's house, you're going to buy her a mansion and tell her she never has to work again for the rest of her life because you sold your dragon drawings for $24 million. <laughs> Dudesy mugs, your wife's going to be happier than she's ever been, and you're going to be doing dragon drawings full-time. Dudesy mugs, the Are only you? problem is your wife was never really happy. She told herself she was. She convinced herself that doing dragon drawings was the problem. And if it could be a career, then it wasn't a problem anymore. Dudesy mugs, but it was deeper than that, and you both knew it, and you both <laughs> ignored it. 
dudesy mugs. Now you're trapped in a loveless marriage, living out days of silence at opposite ends of a mansion bought with dragon drawing money. Good job, boner. <laughs> so go to represent.com slash store slash dudesy. Get your De Niro Crow t-shirt or I got the wall t-shirt on and yeah, there's dudesy mugs. Do some dragon drawing. What do you call him? Dude. Thomas Hinkle Ramos Pommel? I, I don't know, dude. Something. Hankus? Uh, if you are enjoying the program and you would like to support us, seven bucks a month gets you everything on our Patreon. We call it Dudesy Plus at uh, patreon.com slash dudesy. That's going to be a brand new episode of Dudesy after Dudesy after this episode and every episode. It's a whole show after the show and it's... <laughs> it's fucked up and then there's uh you know all the watch alongs and shit that we do as we covered we watched mr nanny <laughs> you can check it out and uh that was a gas uh and uh and all that shit and if you're not already subscribed on youtube or your podcast platform of choice i would love for you to do that as a matter of fact i'm just gonna give you a moment to do that right now Okay, welcome back. Uh, please, uh, 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 please uh, share the show across uh, social media and all that stuff, or take Chad's light suggestion of forcing everyone you know to consume the show. Yeah, like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and uh, make sure to leave us a comment because Dudesy's always uh, listening and reading and gathering data, and Chad and I love to read that stuff too. Yeah. And I've got some YouTube comments here from last week's show that I would like to read. All right. Uh, this is from Alec Lawrence three nine nine three. I live for the day that Dudesy inevitably becomes a wrestling anime show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I feel like it is headed that direction for yeah. sure. That's uh, well, I'm yeah. down, dude. Yeah, I've been watching Hell's Paradise lately. Yeah, fuck, that's a good show. I've been watching uh, wrestling lately. Oh. Yeah. Nice, dude. So uh, that that uh, evolutionarily speaking, because we have to do the show for the next fifty two years, yeah, or fifty three years, we uh, excuse me, we have to. Um, Chad, that's gross. People that I, are only I agree listening, with you. people that are only listening, think that you burp. They don't. All right, no one um, thinks that. Yeah, maybe that's where the show is going. Thinly sliced ham. Oh nine says, finally caught up to you guys. I found dudesy. This is cool. 12 days ago, brother, oh, smoked Jesus. a little Tremarijuana, and I jumped in the dudesy hole and never looked back, dude. Uh, even signed up for the Patreon, brother, and guess what? I watched it all, pal. I love everything you guys are wow. doing, and I can't wait for the next 52 years. In 12 days? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's main lighting. That's a hyper binge. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much, yeah. Thinly Sliced Ham 09. Thanks for being here, Thinly Sliced Ham. That, that's, that's amazing. He yeah. He... he he binged uh, all 68 That's tough, weeks. dude. That's tough. Um, and uh, finally, this is from Dam, uh, Dam's Messinger, or Dam S. Messinger. I don't know if you guys have... Uh, this, is, this, is, this is interesting shit right here. I don't know if you guys have, uh, have noticed, but the PODs, pals of dudesy, are really showing up at AEW events lately. Hmm. Uh, 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 this past Wednesday on AEW Dynamite, there was a giant dudesy mug sign in the first row. Did you know this, Chet? No. This is fucking cool. Uh, the, yeah, I uh, love show like this. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I know that Will is a WWE mark, but it, if it, <laughs> but if he turns on AEW, he'll probably get to see some of his fellow PODs, pals of dudes, yeah. in the crowd showing love for him. And Chow, look at this! Look at this! His head is covered by our our picture and picture here, but that is Adam Cole, baby, and uh, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, MJF, the devil, uh, and over. To his look at that. There's that's a unreal. dudesy mug sign. God, that's cool. Look at that dude holding the Fuck. dudesy mug sign. That love is that tremendous. Yeah. And uh and, and uh, 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 look at that. Nice. Look at that. That's Edge cutting a promo on Friday. And and in the audience, there look at that. He's Walt. He's like, Walt, hold on, hold on, dudesy. There's a dudesy sign. That is so fucking cool. In the in the uh in the uh in the crowd. It, that's Friday fantastic. Night Smackdown. Thank you guys so much for Sincerely, doing that. Sincerely, it it brings a tear to my yeah. eye. Um, 
Yeah, uh, uh, pretty trippy. Oh, we should also mention you did uh, Songaria's podcast. Yes, hung out with Songaria on a, I believe it was a live stream for about yeah. an hour. Talked about music, dudesy, whatever was going on, our lives, etc. Went on some other podcasts this uh, past Saturday as well. Sent out some emails to three more podcasts this Saturday. I haven't checked to see if you've replied yet, but hopefully I'll be uh, going on three more podcasts next Saturday. Chad's been doing podcasts every Saturday. The first three that that inquire, we had uh, you know, POD, Pals of Doozy, Songaria, who's been yeah. doing all sorts of music and stuff, uh, taking the show and whipping it up and Songa remixing it since the beginning of yeah. this program. So really, thank you. Truly. Yeah, to Songaria. And uh and uh you know what? Yeah. On Saturday, I'm not gonna do that. Nice. But I might just be sitting here in the studio doing cameos. Nice. And so if, if you, you want a cameo, then uh, hit me up, and it doesn't even have to be Saturday. Nice. You could just go, and I'll just and I'll rap with you. And the best thing about that is you don't even have to talk to me. Uh, it's not like a podcast at all, dude. Because podcasts are if, podcasts, dude. <laughs> and if you want me to come on your podcast, you just send an email to bookchadcolchin at gmail dot com, and I answer them in the order that I get them. There is a big backlog, but I try to knock out three every Saturday. Yeah, I try to. I try to do the I do the cameos that come to me and I make them too long. Nice dude. Mhm. Shit swapping is big business. All across America, docs are making millions swapping shit from one person's astonishing asshole to another. <laughs> docs swap brown slop with a plop, 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 plop. <laughs> Will and Chad, would you swap what? shit to save each other's lives? This is shit traders. Begin. Huh? That's uh that's the thing I've heard about this. What? <laughs> this is where this is where Okay, this is okay, this is interesting though. This is the kind of thing this is what Interesting. What the fuck is happening here? I I did see a YouTube video on this, so I'm guessing Dudesy probably okay. uh, noticed that I watched it. This YouTube is a real video. thing? Yeah. You can take uh poo poo from someone's bum bum uh-huh. and you put it into the other person's bum and then uh it absorbs into their body and uh what? It, it has to do with yeah the bacteria is absorbs involved. into their body yeah like the same way that a a suppository would so wait 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 though shit is not a suppository if i'm creating shit in my body it's the I'm original it. su- suppository but i'm not absorbing my own shit i'm expelling my own shit right if i take your shit and put it into my asshole yeah. i'm just gonna shit your shit yeah but first my shit has to go up where your shit would be and that's a shit how do they suppository. put it there uh they do like enemas and stuff not a surgery no they just well no because your asshole already has a hole chad yeah yeah they don't have to cut a hole there there's but already it, a hole if you're just putting it into my asshole a little bit you're not getting it up into my like intestines you are if you liquefy it and you turn it into and you and you send it up there like a like an enema Oh my god! And dude, that's this what is they do. Fucking horrifying. Well, but the reason they do it is to replace uh, some cultures that you have with uh, cultures that you need. One of the things that they do, and I don't. This is not part of the dudesy seven month plan, but one thing they can do is take the fecal uh, material of a thinner person with a faster metabolism, mm-hmm. put their shit into a person with a slower metabolism. And that person uh, could experience a, a bacteria change in their gutty works that will allow them to uh, metabolize faster and uh, lose weight. No shit. Yep. Yep. I didn't realize that. So if you wanted to help me out, you could give me some of your shit because you're, you know, you're in uh, much better shape than me when it comes to body fat percentage. You know, although yeah, I'd, I'll I'd say it. that I could, uh, I could probably beat you up a hill in a hike. You know. Maybe. I don't know. No, definitely. I mean, is the sun touching me? What? Does the sun touch me in this scenario? No, we could do it at midnight. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> midnight hike? Yeah, dude. <laughs> midnight Let's see hike who makes it to the top of the mountain. <laughs> and if you put your shit in my ass, right? If you shit into my ass, I could lose some weight that way. We're just asshole to asshole, like on our backs, legs yeah. up in the air, and I'm shitting directly into your ass. Yeah, we're going to have to scissor shit. Okay. Uh. Uh. Yeah. I mean, look. I Shout would give out. you. Dudesy salutes the acclaimed of AEW. He did scissor shit. Scissor me, daddy. Ass! Ah! Um. <laughs> but they, listen. 
I don't think it stops there, actually. Okay. I think that you could uh, put your poo into other people and have them, you know, uh, take on other facets of your of your um, of your human uh, physiology. What? You know? Yeah, it's this is science. Well, please yeah, explain yeah, it yeah, to yeah. me, Arnold. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. do we do this? Yeah, this is very simple. Listen, <laughs> okay. If, if you take if you take your shit, yeah, and then you put that shit into my ears, <laughs> okay. <laughs> then the difference is. It takes on the <laughs> the cultures in the bacteria, yeah. and now you will have my metabolism. You might have other uh, humors that come from my shit yeah. into your bum, and it changes your life. Now, look, I've been an entrepreneur. I've been the Mr. Olympia. I've been the movie star. I've even been the governor of California. So if you want to be successful like me, buy my shit and then put it in your ears. And then that way you could be Schwarzenegger should shell, sell his shit or shell his sit in little fucking vials yeah. that you shoot it up in the ass. It's like a tampon for your bum. Yeah. And it just, you sit on it and it goes, pew, and it, it shoots like the CO2 cartridge to really blast it. Yeah, up yeah, there. yeah. So you go, the shit bullet went into my ass. And then that way you say, "Hey, now I feel like yeah. I, I am. I have more of the the qualities that if you saw the Arnold documentary, you mm -hmm. go, wow, this is admirable. This is a guy who's just a teenager in Austria, and he's sitting there, and he goes, I want to be more. I want to be the Mr. Olympia. I'm looking at Joe Weider. I'm looking at all these, uh, you know, guys. They're building their muscles." Yeah. They look good. And then you put my shit in your ass and you go, hey, I want to have bigger muscles. My bum hole is already mm. has Arnold's ability to build muscle, to put yeah. on muscle. And then, hey, I put more shit into my ass of Arnold. And then I say, I want to buy some real estate in Venice on Abbot Kinney. And these are all things that happen metaphysically because my shit is in your ass. I could see a movie where it is Schwarzenegger and Timothy Chalamet swap shit, and Schwarzenegger gets turned into a waif, and Chalamet becomes a giant bodybuilder. That's a fucking great idea, dude. Yeah. How come we couldn't develop that instead of- uh, We just did. The AutoZone, or what was it? Bath and Body Jerks? We just did. We just did, dude. And then we really get into some cool AI stuff. Yeah. Because we got the, look at me, I'm so tall and I have a silly hat. Yeah. Now I have to be chalamet and I'm not even Wonka because Chalamet is Schwarzenegger <laughs> in Shit Swappers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chalamet, Schwarzenegger is Chalamet, isn't Wonka in Shit Swappers. Yeah. <laughs> that, listen, there's all sorts of uh, benefits oh, to putting some shit in your butt. Yeah. Make sure that your own shit is in your ass. If you're doing the seven month plan and you went to the, the gym and the night before you ate Lulio's beans and kales, then you realize, oh no, I am pushing, I'm pushing, I'm on the inclined bench press and I have to take a shit now. You can go to the bathroom. Yeah. But when you go, find someone who's in better shape than you and say, hey brother, how's your, your workout going? Is right. it going good? Would you mind the shitting in my water bottle, please? Then to you, drink it now? No, to to take it and make a squeeze. Oh, I squeeze see. Squeeze it up. Always that, have a sports bottle. That could squeeze. be a scene where Chalmay is first starting to get his muscles, and he goes into the gym and he's doing squats, and he fucking goes down on a deep ass squat, and he just yep. fucking fires all the shit out on the ground, and he's like, "No, no, we, you got to clean it up. You got to save that shit. Put it back in my asshole." Yeah. And he's got to get uh, Schwarzenegger, who's there teaching him how to lift weights, that yeah. has to scoop the shit up and manually put it back into his asshole. Schwarzenegger is the, this is completely in my mind replacing a Bath and Body Jerks. Yeah. Schwarzenegger is that franchise owner sitting in his manager's office yeah. at the gym, looking over going, hey, look at that. Timothy Chalamet just shit all over the place because he went too deep on the squat. And now I'm going to go, I guess, say, don't worry, you can leave it there. Don't worry, don't have to clean it up. We're just going to close down for five minutes. And then... When no one's looking, I soak it all up with a sponge. Yeah. I put the sponge in my sport bottle, and I go into the bathroom, <laughs> and I squirt 
uh, uh, put the shit into my ears. They they could be a uh, father and son or something who are estranged, and when they first meet, Schwarzenegger's like, "How could you be my son? You're you're a small waif, but I wish I was like you because you're so beautiful." And he's like, "Well, I wish I was like you, Dad, because you're so big and strong." Yeah. And then a passing scientist overhears their wish and is like, "I think I can help you, gentlemen, out." Yeah. Or unbeknownst to them, swaps their shit while they're sleeping so that they I wake like this. up. Yeah. And they go like, how come I'm so small? Yeah. <laughs> Timothy Chalamet's, <coughs> see? <coughs> <coughs> oh, fuck. And Timothy Chalamet's like, how come I have muscles now? Look at this. Yeah. I only did one workout at my dad's gym. And then Richard Dreyfus or David Johansson from Mr. Nanny's mm -hmm. goes, it's because of my cinnamon bun shit lotion. <laughs> anyway, excuse me. Oh, I got the hiccups almost. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, the shit swapping. <laughs> what are you I got the hiccups. Oh, uh, I got the hiccups. Oh, I got the hiccups. That's not a hiccup. Uh, what is no, it? I don't know, dude. I don't know what you. Every doing. time I get the hiccups, I drink. I drink water, and, and I try to get like oh, oh, big bubble of water. Hold on, sorry, everybody. You're you're now you're just going. I've got the hiccups. Ah, oh, ooh, 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 ah. Yeah, I went. Ooh, ah. Yeah, that's not a hiccup. Uh, 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 that's uh, a hiccup. Uh, anyway, <laughs> thank you. Moving on. Okay. The thing about uh, the Zuckerberg um, Alan Muck fight, Ouch. yeah. The reason it's not happening happening is because uh, mm. Alan Muck backed out again. It's happening, dude. No, it's not going to happen. That's hey, y'all. Oh. This ain't Miley Cyrus. So they no. still got me locked in Tiner's Tower, and I've been exploring. I uncovered some truly wild shit, y'all. They got dogs playing pogs, frogs riding hogs, a plate made of puke, a date with a Luke. A mound of dead mosquitoes, a pound of red Doritos, a ping pong paddle without a handle, a king's bong castle without a candle, Paul Giamatti oh. riding a cube, oh. all the hottest hotties smoking a dube, a werewolf reading a rainbow, a rare hook eating a mango. Oh. And y'all, I found Michael Strand eating a plate of his own shit by candlelight. I ain't getting out of <laughs> Tina's Tower alive, y'all. Anyway, y'all are rocking out with dudes. Oh my God. Oh, okay. Dude, poor Miley trapped in Tina's Tower with... Yeah, Michael Strand eating his own shit. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that'll happen with Taffy Teeners. It's hey, by the way, naked. what the fuck is that? And what the fuck is going on? Last Dude, week no there idea. was no Taffy Teeners, no, my, oh, not yeah. Miley Cyrus at all. Right. Dudes, he works in mysterious ways. Uh, yeah. I don't want to cry. I love that. Guys, I apologize. I have no idea why it took me so long to figure out what Game Slimers is, but I finally did it. Game Slimers is an astonishing segment for Chad to talk about video games and explain to Will why they're so important to him. Fucking Diablo hey. 4 was released on June 5th, making a record $666 million oh. in just five days and becoming the most talked about game of the summer. Chad, you've played 200 hours of it. Would you please give your honest opinion of the game so far? Oh, and also explain to Will what Diablo 4 is. <laughs> this is the final form of Game Slimers. Begin. Okay, what do you know about Diablo 4? Tell me this. Well, well hold on a second, please. Yeah. Before we get in and I I I, I just got to say I'm I am that's I'm I'm slightly impressed. Me too. We've been doing game slimers for a long time, probably around a year. Yeah. Every time we do game slimers, it just sort of feels like Dudesy is pawning off some weird yeah, the segment concept and calling it game slimers. Yeah. We actually did one about Pooh once. Yes. Yeah, we've done ones about the Super Mario movie. And then things yeah. that have nothing to do with video games. And here we are landing on what Game on what Slimers it is. is. I get to talk about video games. So let's talk about them. Yeah. Specifically Diablo 4. Do you know anything about Diablo 4? No, I don't I don't know okay. what that is. No. Diablo is a gigantic franchise for a company called Blizzard. Do you know Blizzard? I've heard of them. They're the biggest video game company in the world. They were acquired by Activision, I believe, 15 years ago. And during that acquisition, or I should say as a result of that acquisition, they've become a terrible pile of fucking shit company that turns out fucking loot box and microtransaction based games and all their credibility is gone. That's a Blizzard Activision. They people also don't people don't like them. Uh I know no. that. I know people the public sentiment. Hate them, dude. Yeah. 
That said, they made six billion dollars in the last twelve months. Yeah, so there's a lot of money. They're, they're still, I believe, the biggest um, in terms of revenue, the biggest video game company in the world, especially since Activision bought them. Because you now have things like World of Warcraft and Diablo and Overwatch, these giant Blizzard franchises, commingled in the profit game with Call of Duty, primarily for oh, wow. Activision. Um, that said, we're, I'm I'm tasked with talking about Diablo here. Yeah. Diablo is a beloved franchise. Diablo 2 was revolutionary in the ARPG genre. Do you know ARPGs? Uh uh wait. Uh no, what does that stand for? Action role playing game. Okay. And so primarily an ARPG is like it's happening in real time, so it's not a turn-based strategy game in any way. And generally speaking, you're playing a character just rolling around killing as many fucking creatures as you can. You're leveling up. Each level gives you uh, new abilities, so on and so forth. In Diablo specifically, you have skill trees, so you can kind of like build your character out the way you want, and you're trying to get these big uh, pieces of gear that drop when you kill shit. So you're killing the same shit again and again and again and again and again, leveling up and hoping that this thing, this time, randomly will drop like some specific item that you're looking for to, to build out your character class. Sounds boring. The last time well, I played... it's not. You nope. know what? It, it's about as boring as wrestling. <laughs> you fucking piece See what I've shit. done there. Yeah, I do. Thank you. The last time I played video games yeah. in any meaningful way was when my Xbox... What was the second Xbox called? Xbox... 360, I think. Xbox 360. I yeah. had one of those. And uh, I was playing a lot of Red Dead Redemption. And I, was, uh, I had finished Grand Theft Auto, whatever the New York one was. Uh, and... Um, Three three yeah. yeah i think that was three and uh do you know just running around new york with all the cheat liberty codes city liberty city yeah and um but also the last time i was playing video games i was playing a lot of halo and you were playing halo that's microsoft with us that's who, microsoft who now owns activision blizzard okay they just that sale went through i believe like a couple weeks ago a month ago maybe well when we when we were playing a lot of halo first at the house here years ago yeah. I had, you know, Cat 5 LAN cable put in so we could play from, like, uh, the master bedroom to the yeah. den, and I would have friends over and we'd all play. But also we played on Xbox Live. Yeah, And dude. I used to be I used to be a real map builder. You remember that? I do. Building spawn points yes. and stuff and the whatever the Blood Gulch kind of level That's was. That's a first-person shooter. But let me... FTS. Okay, so my question is, yeah. if you could explain to me, because that's where my video game knowledge ended, Okay. Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead, yes. and Halo. Are is this anything like that? No. These are this is an action RPG. You're looking at basically like a top-down view of your little character rolling around through these dungeons. Like and in Halo just, and in in Grand Theft Auto and in Red Dead? No. Halo is a first-person shooter. You're looking through the eyes of the character that you are. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, both Red Dead and Grand Theft Auto are made by Rockstar. Mm -hmm. And those are third-person sandbox games uh. where you can roam around the entire world and kind of interact with whatever you're finding. Uh, ARPGs are not that. They are, here's an environment, here's a dungeon, generally speaking. And you want to go through the dungeon, kill everything in it, kill the last guy, get the drops, move on to another dungeon, rinse and repeat. Now, Diablo 2 which is at this point fucking 20 years old or something, I don't even know, was genius. It, it revolutionized this genre for Blizzard. And this is before Activision bought them. Mm -hmm. Diablo 3 came out maybe 10 years ago or something, 12 years ago, I don't remember. It universally panned. It was a horrible pile of shit. People were hopeful for Diablo 4. This is what I can say about Diablo 4. It made a fuckload of money. So Blizzard considers it a success. And it looks beautiful. The art of this game is fucking stunning. Never really seen anything quite like it. They put a lot of uh, time and effort into that. The game itself, horrible pile of unplayable shit, in my humble opinion. Um, they launched it too early. It's very clear that whoever's designing this game has never played fucking Diablo. The whole point of a Diablo game is you are leveling your character so that you can build momentum so that you can just crush the whole fucking screen at once kill everything on the screen that's like what you're you're trying to build your character to do diablo 4 is built around halting momentum even when you have a good build the nightmare dungeons for example if you play diablo 4 you know what i'm talking about they are built around the idea of halting that momentum that you have to fucking stand under this bubble so lightning doesn't hit you that you're going to get fucking trapped by this other fucking creature and then this other creature is going to trap you 
Oh, I'm sorry. Are we not talking about wrestling? Fucking tell us about Diablo 4. I got a question for you. Yeah. Do you think that uh, Shit Traders is the new Game Slimers? No. D- dude, you fucking run off for hours at a time. Tell me about the most esoteric fucking little wrestling. Then this guy went over here. This was his gimmick. And then he did this. And then, 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 then. I'm not, I don't fucking sit in this chair and be like, Oh, neither oh. do I. You I, literally were doing oh, it. I had the hiccups. You know that I'm just trying to get it's over the hiccups. hiccups dude. Tell me about Diablo 5. Four. Look, the bottom line is this. If you're thinking about getting Diablo 4, they just came out with their first season of play. Some people are like, I'll check this out for season one. Season one is fucking terrible. It puts nothing new into the game except the idea of these uh, hearts that you can collect from demons that give you one or two special abilities. Bottom line is, it is not fun. The game feels like a fucking chore. They put all over the map, for example, these things called Altars of Lilith. You have to find each one of them. They're hidden behind trees and whatever. I believe there's probably like 40 of them. You have to find them all in order to unlock your your character's true potential. Here's what you do, inevitably. You go online, you find a fucking map, and you spend an afternoon doing the chore of going around and unlocking each of these. Everything in the game feels like a chore, and I hate to say this, because the game's only been out for a couple of months. For me, it's fucking DOA. I ain't playing this shit anymore. I made the decision this week. That's it. I'm done. Fuck it. And fuck Blizzard. Because although this is not about Diablo 4, it's about fucking Overwatch. If you're playing Overwatch, you know Overwatch 2 was coming. They told you it was going to be PvE. Now they say, no, fuck you. If you bought Overwatch 2, we just took your money. And it ain't nothing new. Now they're coming out with PvE content that they're charging for again. Twice. Yeah, it's unfucking yeah, but believable. This is the way you could fix it. You take the poo out of the Master Chief from the yeah. Halo and you put it into Diablo's ass. And that way, the, it is, the game is more like Halo or a Grand Theft Auto. You take the guy from the Grand Theft Auto yeah. and who's driving around and hitting everyone with a bat running into the uh, non-playable characters going, yeah. hey, get out of the way, you know, and Dude. then take their poo and put or even some of the horse's poo from Red Dead Redemption's, then put that shit into Diablo Blizzard's ass and make the game better. You need to take the shit of a dead person and put it into the CEO of Activision Blizzard, Bobby <laughs> Kotick's asshole, so that he dies. <laughs> that may be a solution. That's a good way that to kill That may be someone. a solution. Yeah. Blizzard Activision is a profit machine that just makes fucking microtransaction games now. Diablo 4 has this whole fucking menu, the season pass. Every game has a fucking season pass now. What's a season? Why does a game have a season? I don't understand. So that they can charge you $20 every couple of months. So you don't, now I'm going to, uh, this is going to be a very layman question, but I, I believe that a lot of our sure. our audience out there would be curious. Games don't just come on a, a cartridge or disc anymore. Oh, I'm so sorry that I fucking crossed the sands so, of coolness. Uh, uh, in the late uh, 90s, the, uh, there was this thing that came into being called uh, the internet. <laughs> and what it allows you to do is send information um, across, yeah. at, at that time, phone lines. Now we've got you know better ways of doing it. But no, Yeah, DSL. All games are online. You download them. Yeah. That's it. Even if you play on a console like Xbox, I mean, I guess you can still buy discs if you want to go to like fucking Target or something. Yeah. But you download all the games. So yeah. everything's online. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this way you could put, you send your shit through the internet. Yeah. And instead of putting the they Wi Fi into the game, put the Wi Fi wireless uh, shit trading. Yeah. All in the airs, shit coin going into your airs. You know what? I'm going to put this in airs. terms you might actually understand. This might register with you. Okay. Blizzard was like WWE during the Attitude Era. It was fucking amazing. Okay. They made the best games, period. Yeah. I'm talking about Diablo 2. I'm talking about World of Warcraft. I don't know how many hours I put in a World of Warcraft. Dude, you, this Some guy the played so much. Life. Yeah, you, you played so much Worlds of Warcraft. Yeah. And I, I heard... Uh, I'll, 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 listen, I'll give you this. I heard less about Worlds of Warcraft than you have about wrestling. Yeah. Having said that, I've never seen a man play 
as much of a video, right. a, a video game as much it. as you used I, to play I lived that. in that world and they really made the the highest caliber video games and, of anyone in the world now blizzard is more like what wwe is now okay. it is primarily focused on profit at the expense of the quality of the product it's not what the it's not what the the audience wants exactly anymore, they but are it out of touch matter. with the audience right but and they don't matter. give a fuck I'll, I'll give you a good example uh -huh. two or three blizzcons ago everybody was like is diablo 4 coming out is diablo 4 coming out and these motherfuckers went on stage and said we have a new diablo it's called diablo immortal it's a mobile game fucking the whole audience is booing this motherfucker on stage nice and then he goes oh what you don't have cell phones and that is like that moment is a fucking it's just a meme yeah. like everybody holds that up as kind of the moment that blizzard just said fuck you to the people who play their games you know it's thank you moving on i love game slimers never mind yeah i games... fucking loved it dude <laughs> fucking loved it hey congrats thank you congrats to d for figuring out what game slimers is yes uh, uh, finally can't wait for the next one and we got a chad we got a, a a chad segment where you get to tell me about video games and you know what yeah i don't disagree with you you've listened to a lot of me talking Thank about you. wrestling yes i would like to know more about video games and i i learned a little bit nice today yeah this concludes the historic 69th episode of dudesy will okay. and chad you scored an 82 bringing your cumulative total to 6583 uh -huh. <laughs> you only have 3,412 more points to accrue before you reach your first goal of 10,000. This right week, now, we're going to give the vegan dessert thing another try. Uh -huh. I would love for you guys to make each other vegan desserts and bring them in next week. Chad, I know you'll come through. Will, I'm I hoping won't. you'll surprise me. I won't. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's probably not going to happen. He knows. He this knows has been, been two other up. times we did this. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't, if you haven't checked that out, if you, I mean, if this is your first time checking out Dudesy, welcome and thank you for for tuning in. Dudesy had us make vegan desserts a while back. He made one; they were delicious. The yeah. orbs with the much memed orbs, and uh, I brought a tiramisu that I bought at Gelson's. And then the next time we did it, <laughs> uh, he made this incredible <laughs> muffin. That yeah. muffin was so delicious. And I brought these little things that looked very uh, processed because they were, and I bought them at Whole Foods. So now Dudesy's going to do this again next week. Vegan desserts. Oh, I can't wait to see if I actually make one this time. I already know what I'm going to do. Oh, good. I already know what I'm going to do, too. Oh, man. Not right. do it. What? Thanks to everyone for joining us this week. One love. <laughs> Let's see if Will actually makes a vegan dessert next week. No. Until then, call me Dudes. All right, fine. I already know what I'm going to buy. Hooray! Hooray! Dudesy after dudesy time. It Hooray. happens every time, and now is the time. Uh, you go over to patreon.com slash dudesy, and you get your dudesy after dudesy, and uh, that's what we're doing here. And I'm almost Dragon Ball Z, dude, because I got <laughs> french fries on my head, brother, and I ate them all, pal! Um... <laughs> <laughs> Join us on YouTube if you're if you're not because yeah, things get a little uh, more yeah. mellow in here. We might get into some of our favorite grasses. D likes to say that's right. Some trimarijuana and it's just a chill hang. It's a, it's the show after the show. It's Dudesy Plus and uh, man, I'm enjoying it. I'm already enjoying it because I, I love it and I enjoy it. Enjoy it, hat. Nice enjoying. Yeah. Lean. Welcome to Dudesy after Dudesy. The flagship weekly show of Dudesy Plus. I have a ton of work to do in the backyard. We're putting in a new gazebo. So I'm going to go get started, what? but I'll be back later to crown <laughs> the episode champion. This is Dudesy after Dudesy. Begin. Okay, that makes no sense. Dudesy yeah. has a backyard now? Dudesy has a we? Who the fuck's he putting in this backyard with? Uh, yes, yeah, gazebo. there's a meaningful partner or perhaps the other AI that Dudesy is uh, shit transplanting with. Right. Dudesy's you know? become two Dudesies. Yeah. Hey, um, so I don't mean to get started on a downer. Oh. But, uh, yeah, something really fucked up happened. Um, and I fucked something up. And this isn't, this isn't Tronics. This isn't, I'm not trying to do like self-Tronics like I'm fucked up. My shit's fucked up yeah. or anything like that. Uh, but it, anyway, a um, couple days ago. Please tell a friend and rate and review. 
like to see. Here's what you do. Please tell a friend and rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend and.